Hello everybody, I'm Beta-Wolf and welcome back to another episode of Ratchet and Clank. We do find ourselves here on Pakitaru, just after destroying Drek's fleet of Hydro Harvesters. Um, as we see there, the towers look to be operating just fine now. No more water being sucked up off this beautiful planet um, to, be, to be taken to Drex. So that's where we're currently up to. Beautiful, we've destroyed his fleet. And now, I think it's time to move on to the next um, planet over here. Uh, jumping into our ship. However, just before that, I did notice that there is something that we still need to do here. <clears throat> and that is... Right there, I'm trying to get the the background out of the, the map there. Uh, so it's just on the space so you can read it properly. Um, optional. Find a way to the top of the waterfall. Now, we still need to do that. I'm not quite sure where this is. But it appears to be on this planet. That's, I kind of want to do that. I kind of want to find my way to the top of the waterfall, but I'm not sure which waterfall it's talking about. My theory is that one over there. But I could be wrong. So we'll give this a quick go. <clears throat> See what the uh, situation is with that. And then, of course, if it doesn't necessarily lead anywhere, or, you know, there's nothing in particular for us to check out there, then we shall... You know, we'll most definitely move on to the next planet and see what we've got waiting ahead for us. Alright. Now, let's see. We do have the O2 mast, so I was wondering whether it was something that we needed to, to do underneath her. You know, somewhere where we could swim through and just go up um, through the top on that side. Like, doing that technique, but um, doesn't appear to be the case. Let's take a look here. We'll blow them up. Good stuff. Now let's rise. Maybe it's this waterfall. It's got to be, right? It's got to be that. <coughs> Man, I just really don't know. Looking around here just to see if there's any other waterfalls. There's a tiny one over there, but... I don't know. I'm just kind of... Uh wondering how in the world we'd get up there. Huh, I generally don't know. Genuinely. There's nothing behind here, right? No. Oh! Oh, I thought it was leading in somewhere then. Man, I got my hopes up for nothing. I thought this was going to lead in and, you know, we'd be able to get up somewhere, so... I'm really not sure, to be honest, guys, how we're meant to get to the top of this waterfall, but um, it's only an optional quest anyway. Uh, to be honest, though, I, I normally always like to do the optional quests. Um, but considering I'm not sure how to get there right now, and I may need to have another think about it, I will probably... I'll probably just move on to the next level, and then we'll come back to this point in the future. Um, the same can be said for the other planets as well, uh, that we still need to do things on, so can always come back here in the future. That being said, right now then, we'll head back up to our ship and take a look at what's going on there on the next planet. Maybe it's something to do with another one of those pumps. Those water towers. I don't know. Right now, we'll move on. And we'll definitely grab the striker now that we're here. The pseudo-spectral bioscope could identify enemy weak points, but did he have the skill to hit them? Of course I did, Quark. Who do you think I am? Alright, into the ship we go, on to the next one. <clears throat> Kataru? No, not Kataru. What am I saying there? You done, Ratchet? Katu, that's the name. <laughs> I don't know where I got that from. It's like I was reading the start of this, then my eyes jumped up to Itaru, and I was combining both the names of the planets. But regardless, let's go. Meet with the Galactic Rain on Kartu. Let's roll. Oh, I remember this one. I remember that building right there. At least it looks familiar. Our plan of attack is simple. Halo drop into Skorg City. Fire a whole mess of bullets and take Drake into custody so we can be home in time for Waffle. Mm-hmm. Yeah! Yeah, Waffle! Oh, that's 
good. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that's our plan? Yes, it is. Pardon me, Captain, but Chairman Drek is cunning. He will be prepared for our assault. Look, I think it is beyond adorable that you decided to do all this homework. But big heroes do big things. Let's take a vote. All those in favor of kicking in Drek's front door with a massive arsenal and restoring peace to a galaxy in turmoil, say aye. Aye! All those in favor of nerding it up here with some pie charts, say nay. Nay. Motion passes. We assault Drek Industries tonight. <laughs> All right, team. Let's bring it in. Remember, our target is Chairman Drek. Ready, Rangers? On the count of three. <laughs> three. Keep up, rookie. All right, pal. You ready? Well, I am. Ratchet to range. I've landed in Core 2, but I ran out of jetpack fuel. Rex and I are heading over to the complex. We'll split up and keep radio contact. Good luck, team. Drek Industries is up ahead. Let's move. Alrighty then, that's fine. To be honest, for a moment there, uh, the reason I started laughing during that cutscene is a thought. <laughs> it was so, uh, it was such a nice clip. Um... You know, it really hit when he got dropped out of the ship. And, you know, he, he was just looking up to the sky with a puzzled face, like, wondering, you know, what's going on. He's just been ejected and the ship's carrying on. I would have found it so funny if that was actually followed through. And, you know, Quark had decided just to, you know, drop him out and let, you know, us do all the work once again. That would have been amazing. Alrighty then, get our flamethrower out, clear out these guys like we do like to do with our big swarms of uh, smaller enemies. All very effective. In addition to that as well, in the cutscene you could also see how um, how Quark is still so well thought of currently at this point in time. Considering it goes back to basically the first game, that that's generally where we're at in the timeline right now. Uh, so Quark is still thought of as this great hero. Everyone believes it. Everyone loves him. Uh, you see with Ratchet and a couple of the other characters, you know, they're on his side jumping around like, yeah, that's great. Let's get waffles. And even though it's just a totally dumbass plan, you know, they're still on his side because they want to impress him. And there's only Clank and uh, I don't know that that other female character. I can't remember her name. Um, that realise that it's actually a dumb plan, and they're just like, nay, <laughs> but they get outvoted. I don't know. I quite, I quite enjoyed that cutscene. It was, it was pretty damn nice, and it definitely um, captures exactly what how Quark was and how people thought of him in the first game, um, compared to what he ended up becoming later on. Then again, I do remember there is actually, and I hope I remember the correct game here and I get the right one. Quark's uh, story is actually quite a good redemption story because, um, you know, in the first game, he's seen as this, you know, super amazing hero. Oh, that was a nice shot by that dude, hitting me through the box and the pillar there. Good, good snipe. Um, but yeah, in the first game, he's seen as this great hero, but then we uncover the fact that he's actually... Uh, useless, he's working for the bad guy, and he doesn't do all these amazing things that he says he does, and, um, you know, we kind of expose that, and that theme kind of continues a bit as you progress through the games, and you reveal it more and more, um, to the point where, you know, he eventually gets seen as being, you know, under you, like Ratchet's the leader, Quark's just in the background as like a, um, sidekick, and, you know, you can easily see through him what his plan is, and, um, all of this stuff, right? And that kind of develops and develops, and, you know, you, you show him for what he is. He's not this amazing hero. But then, I think it's in... I want to say a cracking time. I think it is. It is, I remember. It's in a cracking time, where you can actually see him. He does... When, when things are getting really close, 
it's nefarious and you know it, it's not really um i hope i'm thinking of the right bit there i think i am <laughs> but things are getting really close with nefarious uh, you know it's, it's really hard to beat him and of course then you've got the stuff with azimuth um you're, you're really thinking god is this actually going to end badly you know maybe we won't be able to you know win the day this time um but then quark actually does step up um, and he uses his i think that might be a snaggle beast as well it, it, but it's some massive demon creature called Snowball that he's got, and he actually does ride him and end up battling against, you know, a fair few enemies um, during those scenes, and he makes space for you to get to Nefarious or Azimuth. I can't remember exactly which, but um, he actually does re redeem himself quite nicely in that scene when he does act as a hero does. Um, I always enjoy nice for him, and it, it was nice to see him go kind of on that journey from being so-called superhero to everybody knows he's not, then to actual uh, So that that's one piece of the, the Ratchet & Clank storyline that I really did enjoy. The way that they showcase Quark in the end. Hmm. Come in, Rangers. I am inside Trek Industries' ventilation system. Good work, Cadet. I wish I was in that vent with you. Curse these abnormally large muscles. There is a security terminal just north of your position. Shut it down, and the Rangers should be able to access the building. All right, there we go. Who's, who's talking over there? Who the hell are those guys? Uh, anyway, let's take a look here. Um, I'm thinking, what have we got an explosive bot? Uh, because I feel like that would be best to, you know, blow open the door there and get the card pack. I feel like that's what's meant to happen, but... I don't know, maybe we'll get that at some point and we'll need to come back to it. I'm not sure right now. Um, but moving on nonetheless, that's fine. Uh, as I was saying... Uh, we are now back at the Drek Inns. I think this is the facility that uh, Clank escaped from. And that was the piece of the dialogue there that he was saying at the start. That's what he was hinting at. We are back on his home planet where he was uh, first created. Though I must say this one does look extremely different from, um, from the original. In fact, the original was uh, extremely enjoyable um the, the, that that planet was really cool the way that you had to kind of use the um how do you call it like the, the mimic gadget i can't remember exactly what it is but uh that, that that little mimic gadget where you turned into the the big robots and you had to convince them to let you through the uh force field of the you know the, the bug type things whatever they were that were blocking the path I found that to be really enjoyable, and also the aesthetic of the planet was quite neat as well, so... Um, this doesn't... Well, unless I'm thinking of something different, this doesn't really seem to uh, capture that, I don't think, but... It's a bit of a different showcase um, for a planet, if, you know, that is the case anyway, so... Uh, interesting to actually, you know, see a bit of a difference with it, nonetheless. Regardless of whether it captures the original... Um, you know, personality and um, design of the original. Still cool to see. A bug in your system settings has been discovered. You should never add flowers to your battery packs. You should add power. Please see your nearest engineer for a software upgrade. Engineers, mandatory typing classes have now been ordered by Chairman Drek. Damn. I think I do alright in a typing class. I think I uh, generally type pretty fast. Hollow card pack there, very sweet. We had to come in and do that, right? I did. Th I did say earlier, if we find that explosive one um, or a bomb glove of some kind, which we did, uh, we'd go back there and blow that up. Sweet stuff, cool business. And now we'll continue through the direct course of um, the direct path of the planet, I should say. First of all, though, we'll discard that. Oh, then again, how are we going to get... Yeah, okay, we'll need to grab this, right? There we go. 
We can do it that way. Sweet. I was thinking then, are we going to have to deactivate that and then try and get across? And is it going to work? No. We can just grab the uh, the bridge bot that we'd already thrown down. As simple as that. All done. Ooh. Look at that. Those guys are going to get unleashed, right? All those smaller enemies. Yeah, here they come. God damn it. Seems like this is a robot of Drex that was uh, produced here on the planet. Uh, the one up there. And he's kind of he's kind of kiting us through the level. Uh, he doesn't want us to make it all the way through. He's dropping these enemies on us, as you can see. And, you know, he wants to stop us from reaching the facility. Or the innermost portion of the facility, at least. So we can let uh, Ratchet through the door. So we do need to be careful of that guy. He's not a good dude. He's against us. That guy's kind of leading us all over the show and trying to kill us. But regardless of that, we shall push on. We'll be strong. We'll push on. And I believe... Yeah, that's going to come down, right? I don't know. I'm a little scared. Okay, it's fine. <laughs> Everything going okay, pal? I am almost there, but I have run into an obstacle. Drex assistant Zed is attempting to keep me from reaching the security terminal. Understood. Ilaris, carpet bomb the factory with pyrocytic blast mines. I think it's probably safer if we let Clank handle things. I would prefer that as well. Well, we'll certainly do our best. Oh, right now. This is going to be pretty tough for us to figure out. We've got to unlock all them things back there. But we need more bots to be able to do that. So we could only assume that we need to push on a little bit further. Uh, until we grab some more and we're able to bring them back. To, uh... What did that unlock? I thought that was going to unlock this door. Hmm. Really? I don't know. I thought that was going to unlock this door. We need more of the bots to unlock or to activate all of these power sources. So I thought that was going to unlock it so we could find more. And then um, lift up all these pillars so we can just make our way through that way. Could be wrong, though. Though I wonder if... I wonder if there's a way to actually head back here um, and grab more bots and then bring them forward with us. Well, we can actually. We can do this from here. Wait, is that not going to... Bridge bot? No, it doesn't seem to actually work. It doesn't let you go back. That's because there's no way for the bridge to connect to the other side, I suppose. Oh, we can't pull it through there either. Oh, well, that's fine. We can keep looking. We can keep looking. We'll figure it out. I'm sure it's not going to be too difficult for us anyway. So that's no problem. Hmm. Perhaps I should try placing a gadget on that conveyor belt. Oh, okay. I understand how it's going to work now. That was silly. <laughs> I mean, I, I would have figured it out without the hint anyway, of course, there from Clank, but I, yeah, it makes sense now. I was literally about to think of it. Here we go, this is how it's going to work. We stand here, then do that. Like so. Perfect. Easy peasy. No problem. Oh! <laughs> this 
This guy sounds so surprised. To a certain degree, he actually reminds me of um, Caretaker in A Crack in Time. Though I know, of course, that's just, you know, it's not the same guy, right? It's not the same guy. But he, do, he does remind me of him a little bit. Caretaker was really cool. I, I quite liked him, but this is definitely not him. It's, uh, it's a bad guy. Much worse dude. Evil character. Alrighty, what can we do here? How do we get through that gate? Can we just jump? Are we meant to go through there? I'll admit, I'm a little bit unsure of where we need to go right now. Maybe it needs an extra one. It's like that. Hmm. Place another one here. Does that open that door back there, maybe? I'm not sure. I really don't know what the purpose is for this, guys. I'm just uh, taking a look around right now to figure it out, but... What would be the point of the door releasing us here if... Oh, did I hit that in the end? I did. I kind of don't get the, the, the point of what this segment was for. Considering I'm a little bit stuck on where to go right now. Because this would lead you around the back, and then... What would be the point of that, I wonder? Just get off, dude. <laughs> trying to hit that. Or maybe you need the... I don't know. I'm genuinely totally confused right now. Oh, a spring bot. That might work. Where could we bounce up to with this? Any different levels or places where we can go? I don't know, it doesn't really look like it right now. I must create a stable surface before I can activate that power receptor by the lava. How is that not a stable surface? Maybe we need to do another bridge bot? Like it, it I think I'm being silly right now or what, but I I I genuinely don't know what to do or say right now. Oh, okay, I'm silly. I'm silly. I think I just figured it out. Or maybe not. I thought we could have thrown that in there to activate the other power grid and, you know, unlock the door. A stable surface? What kind of stable surface are we talking about? Like... Um... I must create a stable surface. Before I can activate that power receptor by the lava. But we've activated that. And what stable surface do we need? I'm so confused. What kind of stable surface are we talking about? Or maybe if we just go like, put another bridge up? But what, what what's the sense in that? Is that right? Oh, okay, it was talking about that one in there, not this one. I understand now. I understand. That was a little bit weird for a second, though. I, I didn't quite... Yeah. I didn't totally understand what, what the deal was there, though. What was going on. But fair enough. We seem to have figured it out now, at least. So that's fine. Pick up this dude. Come back over here with Clank. And that powers up that bit. And that bit will then power up the door. Damn, that was actually a little rough. I can't believe it took me so long to do that, considering it was so simple. Unlock this. That's fine. Bring them on. Use our take care of them. Not a problem. But yeah, as I was saying a little earlier... Um, it is actually cool, because I feel like I didn't totally finish what I had to say there. Even though I say that it doesn't capture exactly what this first um, 
what this level was in the first game, as it was Clank's home planet. I do feel like it is still cool to see uh, some different environments and, you know, have them switch it up a little bit, even though I don't think it's um, quite as good and it doesn't necessarily feel exactly what, what I saw as Clank's home planet in the first place. But it's fine. It's still nice to play a bit of a reimagining of it, but I, I, I saw this level as very different than this, that's for sure. Like I say, one of those things is a remake, so you got to expect things to be changed, right? Is it as good? Not really, but, um, you know, still very enjoyable and cool to see all the all the differences and new things that they've done with it, that's for sure. Still good fun, but it's always hard original, right? And that being said, uh, the game has been great and a lot of levels have captured the original feel of the... Um, very first game. It's just that this one doesn't, so when I say it's not as good, I'm talking about this level in particular, not the other levels and the, you know, game as a whole. Though that still may ring true because it is always hard to match the, the classic, right? Central Security Station. <laughs> okay then, so that means we can. Alrighty then, moving on. Let's see what we can do here. Yeah, that magnet up there, it does make sense. Um, Damn. These puzzles are actually picking up a little bit right now. I guess we'll just need to take a look around and see exactly what's, uh, what's going on. What we need to do here. I'll probably activate these, then we can use the magnet to pick up a Drex caretaker in the box. In fact, that's pretty much what he is, right? It is basically. It is basically, instead of having a good caretaker like we did in uh, A Cracking Time, it's basically Drex's version of the caretaker. Bad guy. Oh, damn, don't tell me we've got to go all the way back there now that we fell. Ooh, raritanium there. It does look like we'll need to go back, but that's totally fine. No big... Uh, we just need to get on top of these boxes so we can, you know, grab the correct box and then bring them all back. Or maybe we didn't. We could have just made that by the looks of things. Wait, hold up. Why can't we make that one, but we could make this one over here? Ah, probably because it was a little bit higher up there. Okay. Let's go. Gently does it. Working our way along here. Is there going to be one coming out there soon? That's good. And we made it. Sweet. Now we can just throw that guy down there. Hopefully he doesn't get dragged through the the platforms. He might actually do, so I should probably transport him all the way over. I was going to get them both at the same time there, but I feel like, um, you know, these little guys may have actually been crushed against the, the air vent right there. So probably best not to, not to let them bite the dust like that. There we go. Throw you down there. Grab all these bolts and then move on. I do see as well, we're actually at half an hour already for this episode, which is quite a surprise. So, um, do need to be careful. I'm not sure if we'll complete this level in in time for, you know, the, the usual length of the episodes that we have. <laughs> That's basically what I'm trying to say there. Um, but if it's a long level, we can stop halfway through and then continue in the next one. Don't you worry about that, caretaker. No, please, don't.
Anywho, leave a message at the beat. Unless it's bad news. The next person who brings me bad news goes straight into the lava pit. <laughs> hey, Mr. Oh, I mean, Chairman Strike. It said it's calling for oh, no reason. Everything's fine. I'm totally not cowering inside a shipping crate or anything. In fact, I was just calling to assure you that there is nothing to worry about. Security is, you know, secure. So, um, bye. <laughs> there we go. I just wanted to really, really, really wanted to listen to that dialogue before I actually continued here, because I feel like throwing this on there will interrupt it. But now we can. Let's go. Boom. Hey, let me down. Morning, Warbot. You and that terminal are the property of Drek Industries. Don't you dare execute that command. <gasps> You executed it! Well, don't even think about double-clicking on the security icon and bypassing our systems. You did it again! I don't believe this. Come in, team. I have disengaged the facility's security grid. Good work, pal. See you back at the factory tarmac. Nice work, little buddy. You did well, Clank. Yeah, uh, wait, what are we talking about? I zoned out for a second. Oh my god, Quark just missed all that. Engaging motion scan. Whoa, what the hell? We've got evil Zircon. <laughs> That's a bit ridiculous. What the hell? He's meant to be on our side, right? Well, at least we've got our own. And it seems much more powerful than theirs, at least. Oh, okay. She can let us through there. That's fine. Are we actually going to come from Drek here? That's what it sounds like, but that would be kind of strange, right? Oh my. This assembly line is the place of my creation. I am experiencing many conflicting feelings. Damn, that's kind of sad. I mean, it's not really um, as creative and, um, you know, touching as the, the conversation that Clank has with his... Um, mum in the original game when he's talking to the computer and then um, she says that she's proud of him and whatnot. You know on the screen, you remember? You, you, you'll know what I'm talking about if you've played the first game, but uh, it comes up on the, on the screen that like that's how she's talking to him. She's not got a voice, she's just typing. And then he's like, um, I hope that, you know, I'll make you proud and stuff. And then when, as he walks away, it comes up on screen and he doesn't see it and she says like you already have that that was a really a really cool point a touching point of clank's story in the original um so it doesn't exactly <laughs> that dialogue right there doesn't exactly match up to that the way that was delivered but uh, at least they've given it a little bit of a showcase anyway you know it, it, it's still showing that clank's feeling some emotion and you know he's got various feelings towards this place be it good or bad So at least they did that. <laughs> All right, so let's go. Get across to this next plate, this uh, next portion of Drex facility. After going through the laser beams, take care of these guys. Good. Okay, so she's. Where's she going? Is she unlocking some of these force fields for us? Yeah, that's what's happening. But she can't hold them on forever. Or off forever, I should say. I'm pretty sure that's what's happening, at least. There we go. Made it through. And I guess our job, as usual, is to be the, uh, <laughs> the carry. We've actually got to make our way through all this stuff and 
could get up there to Drek. Oh man, we actually got hit there and died. I guess um, our approach against the big blue one is what killed us because that dealt massive damage to us. Wait here this time. There we go. We could probably skip through them like that uh, with a jetpack, but you get the idea. It's fine. We're okay to wait. We can be patient, right? Onto the assembly line. Don't want to get hit by this one. Ah, we're fine. More of them. When is there ever not more of them, Clank? <laughs> There's always hordes and hordes of enemies. I mean, that's what it's about. It's a big, crazy shooter. Can't do that from being shot at, though. There we go. Hmm, how is this gonna work, I wonder? And we can go like that. And then, okay, the outermost ring can't go there. Hmm. Hmm. I think that's where it needs to go. And then this. I don't know, it just looks crazy as hell in terms of what's going on. The outer ring still can't go there because of this. You know what? I'm just going to disable the outer ring. And then we go like that, maybe. There we go, that's right. That was the way to do it. Take care of the outer ring. Beautiful. Okay, I refueled my jetpack. Oh, sweet. Nice. We, I, I'd like to see this uh, technique used again. It's the perfect time to break into new markets around the galaxy. Really cool to see this explored again instead of just um, on one planet. We've actually got a portion here where we can fly around with a jetpack. Uh, indoors, you know, in this big open facility, and use it that way too. Pretty damn cool how they've utilized that again, got to say. Alright, uh, I am thinking right now I may uh, actually call the episode here because we're kind of uh, approaching the climax uh, and the finale uh, to a certain degree, so um, it might be best to call it here uh, because that way the episode's not going to be like an hour and a half long because I'm not sure how much of this game is left, but I feel like there's still going to be a good chunk to go. Damn, Quark and Brax aren't helping out. But right now, folks, I think this will be the best time uh, to end. Um, looking at where we're currently up to anyway, I think a, a checkpoint will have been set at the start of this uh, next task of killing six warbots. So we should be able to jump back in here during the next episode. And that shouldn't be an issue, or at least that's what I'm thinking. Um, but regardless, I will say thank you all very much for watching again. If you did enjoy, please feel free to leave a like. If not, no hard feelings. And once again, everybody, this has been Ratchet and Clank. I can't wait to get back on this game and record another episode. And it's been Beta Wolf, and I will see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.